Hussein, 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 Ya Hussein. In the first madlis I had said that the blood that flows in the veins is of no use. Huh? The fifth Imam has said, Wallahi, I swear upon God. Wallahi, by Allah, I swear upon God, there is no relation between me and God except that of taqwa. This love, this blood, this relationship, this falan, my family members, my this, my that has nothing in front of God. And today I will prove it. Eleventh Imam in the year 260 Hijri. In the, this is the time when the Imam is now about to be martyred. Shahadat is just about to be closed. Listen to this tradition, how blood doesn't play a role. What plays a role is taqwa. What plays a role is, is obedience to the mission of the Ahlul Bayt. 15 days before the death of the Imam, 15 days, this incident takes place. The 11th Imam calls, in 255 Hijri, the 12th Imam is born. 260 Hijri, the 11th Imam passes away. Five years is the age of the 12th Imam, Imam Zamana, when the father passes away. When the birth of the child took place, there was a member in the family of the Imam by the name of Jafar. This Jafar was the son of the 10th Imam, was the brother of the 11th Imam, and was the chacha of the 12th Imam. Understand, huh? The son of the 10th Imam. He was the son of Imam Ali al -Nakhi. He was the brother of the 11th Imam, because 11th Imam was also the son of the 10th Imam. And he was the chacha of the 12th Imam. This Jafar, born in the family, surrounded by the Masumin, the father a Masum, the brother a Masum, and eventually the, the Bhatija, the nephew that is coming, is a Masum. This person goes rogue. Can you imagine living in the house under the tutelage of a Masum father? And in the company daily, a sibling who is a Masum, a person can go rogue. So what is the Sheikh Bana? What is the shaykh when imam comes? Can I not go rogue? This is what the sixth imam says. Be careful, huh? Allahumma ajil le waliyak al faraj. Make sure you don't go rogue. Look what happens. This man, Jafar, with the father who's a masum, with the brother who's a masum, develops friendship with the people of the darbar of Bani Abbas. He would keep visiting the darbar. He would keep going there. He would keep getting entangled with them. Till the time comes, he completely goes astray. To such a level that five years after the Viladat of the 12th Imam, the Ashab of the 11th Imam know, very small coterie, an elite group of the companions of the 12th Imam know about the arrival. Of, companions of the, of the 11th Imam know about the birth of the 12th Imam, but the brother Jafar is not told. The 11th Imam does not tell Jafar that I am, my son is born. It's kept a secret because Imam did not trust him. He was a mole of the Badil Abbas in the house of the 11th Imam. He would pick up information about the 11th Imam, the whereabouts of the 11th Imam, the issues that would, talk, that would be discussed, the money that would, become and, that would be coming to him and pass it on to the Darbar of Bani Abbas. Imam did not have any confidence in him. So Imam would never tell him about, about the Viladat of the child. Five years he did not know. This is like, you know what? In the house of a Masum, but you go deviated. You see in history, this is not the first instance. Quran, Hadrat Anu, his son, when he's about to drown, he's in the ship, he's about to drown, he turns to God and says, Baba, he's my son. You had promised that my Ahl, you will save him. Allah, he's dying, he's about to drown. Save him. You know what God says? Ya Nu, innahu laysam in ahlik. He is not from your Ahlul Bayt, Musa Nu. He is not from your Ahlul Bayt. He may be your son. But he's not from your Ahlul Bayt. Ajab this is our son che, chokro che, but Ahlul Bayt mati nati. You can't contest me on Quran. Yes, I'm talking Quran. It says, innahu laysa min ahalik. He turns to God and says, ya khuda, you had promised my Ahlul Bayt you will save. He is my son. God says, ya nu, this is another Quran I'm reciting. Ya nu, innahu laysa min ahalik. He's not from your Ahlul Bayt. Innahu amalun ghayro saleh. His deeds, his actions are not good. He's not from your Ahlul Bayt. He drowns. Same thing over here. In the house of a Masum, you get a person like Jafar. 15 days, so you understood. 15 days before the Shahadat of the 11th Imam. 
Imam calls his servant by the name of Abu Adyan. Listen to this and with this story will finish off. With this incident will finish off. But very important to understand what is happening. How people go rogue. This is what I want to highlight to you. 15 days before his shahadat, he calls Abu Adyan. He said, Abu Adyan, come here, I got some work. He says, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Ibn Rasulullah, tell me. My servant, I, give me some work. He writes some letters and he gives it to him. He says, Abu Adyan, go to Madain. Go to Madain, a city in, in Iraq. Imam is in Samarra. Go to Madain, take these letters. Give it to these individuals. Once you have given them the individuals, the letters, wait till they reply to you. Once they reply, bring the letters back to me. He says, yeah, I was Kalas, I'm going. He says, wait. Understand now. When you go and you come back, it will take you exactly 15 days. From the time that you leave till the time you come back. It will be exactly 15 days. On the 15th day, you will come here. But when you come back to the city, you will see a difference. He says, what is the difference? He says, I would have died. I would have been killed and you will see weeping taking place in my family. Because before this, prior to your arrival into the city, I would have been killed. He says, Ya Rabbi Rasulullah, what are you saying? He says, don't argue, just listen to what I'm saying. I don't have much time, listen. People are watching, we are under monitoring, listen quickly to what I'm saying. Go back, when you come back, you'll see I have died. This person now immediately says, Ya Rabbi Rasulullah, if you have passed away, who is the next Imam? Who is the next Imam after you? We need to know who the next Imam is. He says, the next Imam after you will be the one who will ask you for these letters that you get the reply for. The Imam had given letters, go to Madain, you get the reply, give it back. He says, the individual who will ask you for the reply to the letters, he is my representative. He says, Yabna Rasulullah, we are talking about an Imamat. People will come to me because I'm your servant. They will keep telling me, now that the 11th Imam has passed, who's the 12th Imam? Who's the next Imam? This cannot be a criteria. Somebody else comes and asks me about the letters and I, my, I, and I introduce him as the Imam. W what will happen? This is too important. Zidni, enlighten me more. Give me some more signs so that I'm certain. He says, second sign is that he will be the one, the Imam after me, is who will lead my prayers of my janaza. So he said, okay, I've got two signs. Can you give me some more information so that I'm absolutely sure that this person that I've identified as the Imam is actually the Imam after you? He says, he will be the person who will give you information about the contents of a bag. Now, before Abu Adyan could ask, he wanted to ask, Baba, which bag are you talking about? I don't have any bag. What bag? Imam just said, third sign is when somebody comes, this man or this person, when he gives you information about the contents of a bag, he is the Imam. Imam turns, goes away. Abu Ladian is wondering, what bag? I don't have any bag. What contents? Confused. Don't, doesn't know what to do. He says, Baba Khalas, now Imam has said, let's see. He takes his letters, he leaves, but he's still worried. What bag Imam is talking? Who is this person who will recite the namaz e janaza? I don't know who's going to come and ask me about the letters. But because Imam had said, he takes off from Madain, goes to Madain. Who? Abul Adyan. Imam is in Samar. He goes to Madain, goes to Madain, delivers the letter. Remains there for a few days, a couple of days, waiting for them to give the reply. When all of them reply to the letter given by the Imam, he takes those letters, brings them back. On his way back, as he's coming, the 15th day, as Imam said, the delay took place. Whatever happened, it eventually coincided with the 15th day that Imam, Imam Askari said. 15th day, you're going to come back to the city. On the 15th day, Abul, uh, Abul Adyan enters the city. As he enters the city, he sees the city is in Qohram. There's a Goga, there's a huge outrage, there's a huge weeping. He says, what are happening? He sees, he goes to the house. He sees a lot of weeping coming from the house of Imam. He remembers, Imam had said, once you enter, you will see a lot of weeping coming from the house. So now he's expecting the worst. He goes and... Ask what has happened? He says, you don't know. He says, no, I don't know. I've just come to Madain. What has happened? He says, 11th Imam, Imam Askar has passed away. <coughs> Begins to weep. Begins to weep. Now, this is now Abu Ladian is narrating now. He's saying, as I was weeping, I saw Jafar. Jafar standing at the door, waiting and awaiting and taking condolences from the people. People would come to him and they would express their condolences. Jafar. Your brother has passed away. We express our condolences. Who is the Imam after him? Jafar would point to himself. I am the Imam after him. 
I am the Imam after him. You know what is the title of this Jafar? He's referred to as Jafar al-Kadhab. Kidhb means lie. Kadhib means a liar. Somebody who lies too much is called Kadhab. Many times a person will lie only one, but that lie is so big that he's called a Kazab. Jafar lied once that I am the Imam, but that lie was so big that now he's referred to as Jafar al-Kadhab. Yeah? He's standing at the door. Now Abu Ladyan is narrating. He's standing at the door. He's taking the condolences of the people. When people ask, who's the Imam? Abu Ladyan is saying, huh? I see people asking, who's the Imam? He says, I am the Imam. So they would give him Tasliyat for the Shahadat of the 12th, 11th Imam and Tabriq for the Imamat of this next Imam because he's the Imam. Says so people would come, people would come. Now I remember the three signs Abu Ladian is saying that the 11th Imam had said. So I said, let me go to Jafar. Probably he's the one, but in his mind he's narrating. Huh? He's saying, when he, I heard him say, I am the Imam. I'm thinking in my mind, if this man is the next Imam, wa alil Islam as salam. Alil Islam as salam. There's salam upon Islam. Then he says, you know why? Because I saw him. He was accustomed to consuming alcohol. He would go into the bosom and he would sit into this congregation of Bani Labas, listening to music, playing, drink, consuming alcohol, gambling. So if this man is the Imam, khalas, Islam is gone. He said, but let me test it out. Three signs given to me by the Imam. I need to work it out. He says, I go to him. He says, Jafar, Tasliyat, your brother is that, Fulan, Fulan. He says, not a problem, not a problem. He says, who's the Imam? He says, I am the Imam. He says, hi, Abbas, khalas. Anything else you want to ask me? He says, no, no, just pray that... You know, Allah forgives him, sins, whatever, whatever. Nothing, nothing comes back. He didn't ask him for any of those letters and the replies. So now he's satisfied. Ha, hash. Now this man is not the Imam. But the problem still remain. Who is this next Imam? Now Abu Ladian is saying, everybody's coming, giving him tasliyat, giving him tabriq, going away. A person comes in the house. It says, ghusl is complete, kafan is complete. Now we need to recite namaz al janaza. So they bring out the body of the 11th Imam. Abu Ladian is saying, I saw the body come out. The people, they were gathered there. There were people who loved the Imam. There were people, normal people of the city. And there were the spies of Banil Abbas. All of them congregated over there. The body was laid out into the courtyard. Jafar comes with his rida. Very nice, very good appearance. Big Maulana, big Maulvi. He comes inside, is about to stand. As he is about to pray, Abu Ladian says, he is about to start the first takbir. Everybody is standing. He says, all of a sudden, I don't know. But from some where a small little five-year-old child comes running but when I see him a job face is nurani face is luminous face is radiant he comes he comes to the prayer mat where Jafar is about to say tugs at his Abba and pulls it he gives a tug to his Abba and gives it a tug and pulls it Jafar turns and looks at the small boy this boy tells him ya ya am oh my chacha ana ahakko bis salat ala abi I am more deserving of praying the Salat upon my father. Move aside. Abu Adyan says, this Jafar was an old adult man. This five-year-old boy comes and tells him, but the waqar, but the o, but the, the obuhat of this boy was such that it left Jafar completely stunned. He could not say anything except to follow the commands of the boy. It was as if he had no way that he could oppose it. But here at this point, let me tell you. See, in Ilmul Kalam, in our fiqh, in our aqai, there is one ruling. Huh? We need to understand. And that ruling is that when a masoom dies, a non-masoom cannot offer Salatul Janaza on him. He cannot. It is not possible. When a masoom dies, the only person who can recite Salatul Janaza on him is a masoom. And the logic is simple. This man who has died is the best of the creation of God at that point on earth. Somebody who is inferior to him cannot pray namaz. Either somebody superior to him will pray. Or somebody equivalent to him will pray. And this is one of the logic and the concepts of Rajat. You know Rajat, right? Rajat is a phase after the arrival of the Imam. When Imam Zamana establishes his hukumat, at a time will come when all the Masumin will come. All the Imams will come back. Hussein will come. Ali will come. Hassan will come. Sadiq will come. Rida will come. All the Imams will come. First person to come. Details we don't want to go. If I were to talk about Rajat, two lectures each hour and 15 minutes we don't have that much time so just suffice to understand all of them will come how they will come what they will do what are the details you can read it up some other time or we can skype time nothing money this is just something but also they will start coming the first person to come 
will be Hussein. He will come before the shahadat of the 12th Imam. So that when Imam is zamana is martyred and is dead, somebody, a masoom, needs to be there to recite his namaz janaza. Either somebody equivalent to him or somebody superior to him. Hussein is superior to Imam is zamana. He will come, he will lead the prayer, but that is rajat. That is rajat. Here, Imam is zamana, the fifth, five year old boy, he says, Jafar, my chacha, you cannot pray over him. You don't have the authority. You're a noun masoom. You cannot pray Salatul Janaza on my father who's a masoom. It is only a masoom who will pray over a masoom. Move aside. Abu Ladian says he tugged, he talked the wakar, the obuhat, the dignity, the tone was so stern. Jafar, an adult, could not stand up. He moves aside. The small boy comes up, recites Salatul Janaza before anybody knows he's gone. Abu Ladian says, first sign accomplished. First, remember Imam Askari said three signs. One is when somebody would pray my Salatul Janaza. Sign number two. Sign number two accomplished. Happy. Fire. But who's this boy? Where is this coming from? Where has he gone? Abu Ladian doesn't know. Said, let me wait. Let me wait. While everybody is picking up, now the Salatul Janaza finished. They pick up the body, take it to the Kabrista, take it to the graveyard, next to, uh, to, to, to bury it. As they are taking, suddenly he sees this boy next to him. It says, Abul Adyan, give me those letters, the replies from Madain. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. You'll have to recite one more time after I give you the third sign. Wait now. Second sign complete. What is the second sign? Second sign, Imam Askari says, My representative, the next Imam, will be the one who will ask you the letters from Madain. When the Imam Zamana comes to him, he says, Abu Ladan, give me those letters. Those letters are my, my responsibility. I am the inheritor. Give it to me. As soon as he gives, all of a sudden he says, that boy is no longer there. I said, hush. Second sign complete. First he offered the prayers and the same person has mentioned that give me the letters. He said, but what about that bag? What bag? Which bag? What contents? He says, I was worried. Now the third sign needs to be complete. In the absence of the third, I cannot attest that this boy is the Imam. I cannot address this boy as the Imam. He is now waiting. He says, a day passes. Everybody is now coming to Jafar again. You know that Siya Kanu Niyaz, Hoene A, Hoene Te, Hoene Fatiha, Hoene, I don't know what, what Halim Hatu, Biryani Hatu, whatever Hatu. But people would start coming. As they would start coming, they would start talking. All of a sudden, Abu Ladian is saying, Jafar would be so seated. There were people around, because now he is considered to be the Imam. They are talking to him, they are talking, they are having some, you know, Light banter, talking, this discussion in the center, in the center of attraction. The next Imam, Fulan, Fulan. All of a sudden, he sees Abu Ladian says, I see a caravan coming. And I could make out their Persians. They're from Iran. So they come and they ask, We want to meet Imam Askari. He says, Imam Askari, but don't you know? He says, No. We've just come from Iran, from Kumbh, we are coming. He says, Imam Askari is passed away. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajun. Imam is passed away. Fulan, Fulan, Tasliyat, Fulan. Now, who's the next Imam? So why do you need to know the next Imam? He says, we've got certain wujuhat sharia the khums we've got, sadaqa we've got, we've got certain gifts from people in Iran. We collect them together. Every year we do the same thing. We collect them together, then we come and we give it to the Imam. So we want to hand over the money to the Imam. Oh, money? That is a man, Jafar, not you, Jafar. <laughs> so they go to Jafar. As they're sitting, Jafar says, yes, I'm the Imam, give me the money. He says, no, it doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. He says, why? But you said that you had come to give the Imam the money. And the Imam, give me the money. He says, no. He says, we have a rule. And this rule has been going on for years together. So what is the rule? He says, the rule is that whenever we would come, we would not give the money to the Imam. We would keep those baggages that we had with us. And we would tell the Imam, you tell us what is inside. Once you tell us what is inside, then we know that you are the correct Imam. We don't open the bags. We don't do anything. We just keep the bags in front. You have to tell us one. Which people have sent this? You have to tell us what is there. And you have to tell us each individual how much has been given, has sent. Once you tell us, then we know your Imam will give it to you. Abu Ladian said, I'm listening to this now. I'm listening to the third sign. He said, now I realized. What the third, what the eleventh Imam says, the contents of the bag. This is it. Whoever does this now, I'm certain that he's the Imam. Says I was waiting to see what Jafar does. As soon as these individuals talk to Jafar, tell us, let us know what is there inside. Abu Ladian says, I saw Jafar pick up his rida. Words huh, of the Rivad. Pick up his rida. Stands up in rage, infuriated. What do you think? 
أتريدون أن نعلم الغيب What do you think? You want me to talk to you about the ghaib? Do you think we know the ghaib? What kind of questions you are? If you want to give the money, give the money. Are you trying to test me? Are you trying to do my imtahan? Like people do to us, right? But anyway, you want to ask me. He flies into a rage. Now Abu Ladian is saying, this man cannot be the imam. So now, when he could not answer, this is fair enough. We have taken an amanat from the people of Qum and Iran. We are going back and we will return to them because we have not been assured that you are the Imam. We are going back. As they were turning to go away, a servant comes, comes to them and says, wait. So he says, what is it? He says, my master is now going to tell you what are the contents of the bag. Abu Ladian is watching. He says, who is your master? He points to a little boy standing in the corner. He is saying, he is saying, in this bag there are thousand dinars. And the dinars are given by so and so person, so and so person, so and so person, so and so person. In addition to these thousand dinars, there are ten dinars that are forged and fake, which you need to return it back to the people. In addition to that, there are certain letters given by so and so person, so and so person, so and so person. The information about the contents of the bag. When those people heard this, they said, This is exactly the contents that are there in the bag. Give this money to him because now this is the Imam. Abu Adyan is watching. He realizes sign number three finished. This five year old boy is the next Imam. Sallu ala Muhammad. But then that rogue, you understand why I went to great lengths to explain this? Not only to emphasize to you. That there is no story and, and honky ponky going on. There are realities over here. Individuals who are not from the who are from the family can turn rogue, but there are individuals who are not from the family can become Salman or Minna Ahlul Bayt.